call to order the Tuesday, May 3rd meeting of the Monmouth City Council and ask Phyllis to call the roll, please. Councilor Carey? Here. Councilor Guthrie? Here. Councilor Johnson? Here. Councilor Milligan? Here. Councilor Schaefer is absent. Councilor Silbernagel? Here. Mayor Oberst? Yes. All right, so flag salute, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Uh, consent calendar tonight consists of minutes from the council meeting and work session of April 15th. If I could have a uh, motion to approve those two sets of minutes. Move the approval of both. Second. Moved and seconded in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? And we will adopt those. Uh, short uh, mayor's report tonight. Um, I had a, I guess it was the third, second meeting of the League of Oregon Cities Transportation Policy Committee. We're continuing to move toward uh, some recommendations to the legislature for um, possible transportation policy coming out of the next session. And one of the things that's really bubbling to the surface is an interest in not just asking for increased revenue for general highway work, but specifically, specifically targeting seismic upgrades to try to get the laundry list of seismic issues that exist in the valley to the coast up to the uh, Cascades addressed more quickly than otherwise might be the case. We'll see what comes out of that. It's a long process and we only get to say, gee, it would be nice if you would, but we don't have any <coughs> force past that, obviously. Um, well, Councilor Shetterly asked me at one point to join the Salem, now is the official title is the Salem Health West Valley Hospital and the foundation board and had a meeting of that group at which meeting we approved the appointment of one uh, city manager from this area. <laughs> so, so Scott is joining Darren and Lane and I there. I think we're going to have a motion to move You're the hospital on right? <laughs> right. We're moving the hospital over here, right? Okay. Like, yeah. So anyway, it's it's uh, you walk in there at eight in the morning and it's a bunch of friendly faces. I'll say it's a nice thing. Had a nice uh, coffee with Don Patton after his visit last time and. I walked away from that more convinced than ever that Don has some ideas that uh, may well bear fruit in the foreseeable future to see a little increase in revenues at my net. And I'm, uh, I feel, continue to feel like we are fortunate to have him as the director of that organization. He's really, you know, in what, 18 months? Is that right, Scott? Two years? How long has he been there? 18 months. Yeah, it's, it's amazing what he's accomplished. Um, another one that was kind of fun for me. Um, the director of the American Leadership Forum when I was there, the executive director, was a woman named Robin Teeter, and she has left that organization. She now is working with a group that brings a group of citizens together before general elections to review all the ballot measures on a statewide ballot. And so they, they, they make the point of having a very diverse group. They really pay attention to diversity, gender, politics, age, uh, race, everything you can think of. And they all sit down and discuss the ballot measures and you know come up with a statement for the voters pamphlet about each each measure mm -hmm. and i got an email from robin she was reaching out to people on her contact list saying um anybody know a large meeting space with a hotel this need this for a week in, in uh, august for this group to meet and i wrote her back and said well i've got great meeting spaces but not really a hotel but if you dorms are okay and she wrote back and said a great idea. So she's exploring that possibility. We may see that group on campus this August for a week. So, um, you know, just doing that thing that um, I sometimes do of being our cheerleader and trying to get people over here and see what we've got going. So we'll, we'll see how that one plays out. Um, and uh, then this morning I had the pleasure of um, sitting down with our former consultant, Tom Fuller, and our current president, Rex Fuller. For breakfast and uh, Tom was going to be passing through town and they, he had wanted to meet Rex and vice versa. It turns out that there was a group of three Fullers very very early in the history of the country came over from England and these two gentlemen share the same original Fuller from the 1600s in the early ages. So they're actually kin. <laughs> it was a nice breakfast. Had a really good opportunity to sit down and just have a, a pleasant meal with two people I really like. So. Um, uh, that was a good good one. 
Uh, the only other item I have tonight is an appointment. I've got a request from Aaron, Mc Aaron McDonough, who's uh, over at the university, lives in town, to be on the Monmouth and Gage University Community Relations Committee. And uh, I think she's a really, will be a really good addition to that group. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, if uh, I can have a motion to approve that appointment. So moved. Second? Second. Moved and seconded in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. And we'll add another body to that board. Um, and I look forward to hearing from our Monmouth and Gage group soon. Uh, reports from council reps to boards and commissions. Councilor Selbernagel. Thank you. Uh, the Monmouth Senior Advisory Board met on April 26th. Um, talked about a number of things. One of them, uh, there's a brown bag series that Western's putting on that the Senior Center and Western and there's several other partners that are uh, making it happen. Uh, aging well, aging with others. Their first one was April 27th. I actually attended that. It was very well attended as well as it was good information. Uh, they got another one on May 4th, slightly different topic. That's kind of the same theme, the 11th of May and the 25th. Those are 12 to 1 uh, on campus in the Werner Center. The first ones were at uh, the Lamont Room and I think one or two of them were in the Columbia Room. So that was uh, pretty interesting. The community fair is coming up, uh, the second annual. It's not until July 16th, so it's a little ways away, but they're gonna have a uh, table and stuff. Uh, and that's over at the Lutheran Church, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And this weekend's community monthly breakfast. So it's this Saturday, the 7th at 8.30. And so folks can attend that. Um, I'm always surprised at how many classes they've got going on at the senior center. So besides health and fitness stuff, they do a series of those. I just looked for this month alone in May, they've got classes on iPads, card making, several of those actually, even different people uh, running those. Uh, lunch and a movie, brain builders, how to use tablets, uh, jewelry making, and even American Sign Language. So it's, it's surprising how much mm -hmm. the variety of stuff that they put on. Yeah. It's great. Okay. And that concludes my report. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, Councilor Milligan. On uh, Wednesday, April 27th, the Arts and Culture Commission met. And um, <clears throat> to give you an idea, they've been challenged with trying to get the group with enough for a quorum. So on that meeting, they approved the December minutes. Wow. So are we so short bodies on that? We are. How many do we need? So. Let me get to okay. the next okay, go ahead. item Sorry. on here. So the next item was, it was brought to our attention that a lot more citizens are are getting involved with the 4th of July committee. Mm -hmm. And not as many citizens are as involved with the arts and culture, where there's a kind of overlap of, right. of theme between the two. So right now, the conversation was brought to Arts and Culture Commission about joining the two together. Huh. Um, the conversation, I don't believe, has happened yet with the 4th of July Committee, although someone from the 4th of July Committee sits on the Arts and Culture Commission. Oh, very good. And that was part of where that conversation came from that person. Right. Okay. Um, so there's conversation around that to maybe relook at how we, because right now the 4th of July Commission or Committee is just pretty much an ad hoc committee. Mm -hmm. It's not a formal body sure. of the city. Sure. So it was, could we look at reshaping mm -hmm. the arts and culture um, ordinance that would include that activity a little bit more, mm -hmm. but keep it a little bit less, well, I don't, they, they really, I think from what we understand of the people on the 4th of July committee, they like that mm -hmm. less formal structure. Yeah, I think the same thing happened so, over in Independence with Hobson Heritage where that's a very independent mm -hmm committee so, so I could see a nice middle ground there. Good so story. anyway that's, that's good news what's going on there and it's just we've got some dedicated people with arts and culture but mm -hmm. there really doesn't seem to be enough people there and there doesn't seem to be a real um, event centric piece right. like it's helped move the tree board forward as it struggled mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so anyway that's in the discussion Very good. the other piece that will will likely move forward is the arts and culture mini grants, similar to what goes on with the um, the Parks and Rec mini grants. Right. That, that uh, they want to look at that. It won't be, like the 
Parks and Rec is a date specific one where the arts and culture might be somebody can just apply for a grant any time of the year mm -hmm. when they have something that they want to do for the arts and culture. Okay. Um, but anyway, so there's there's some uh, transition going on there. But, uh, Keep us posted. That's good. But definitely a good core of volunteers on that group. So how many vacancies do you, are there on that committee right now? We have five on there right now. Out of two seven. So we got two, two vacancies. vacancies. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the trick is getting even four people there on a given night. Yeah, it's yeah. just it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's, well if maybe council, if anyone has any <coughs> good ideas of uh, somebody who has an interest in the arts that might be approached to apply to that, uh, let me know. Yep. Thanks, you good. Anything else? No, that's it for okay. arts and culture. Councilor Johnson. Well, I couldn't go to the last planning commission because there's a hearing on the chickens again, uh -huh. and their public hearing. Uh, we do have an opening on the planning commission because uh, lady resigned. Right. And then, you know, and then also, this not on here, but the historic commission is, you know, the, the, at the library that's open now, the display, and this is historic month, and right. we'll bring that on that, so. Okay, very good. Okay. Oh, Council Kerry. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, the MyNet board met on uh, April 28th, and <clears throat> the the majority of really the substantive discussions that we had uh, centered around the the Dawson report that that, that was mentioned. I believe Don uh, mentioned that last time uh, when he was here, and you all should have gotten a, a, a summary of uh, or a a summary of that with Don's report to council. Um, uh, my date here shows uh, April 15, 2016. I don't recall getting it, but that's that's what it was noted. I will forward that all yeah. on to you all. And, and, and what it is, it, it's a summary of um, uh, the 32-page the report from Doug Dawson. And I've mentioned this before, and Don just touched on it. Doug Dawson is a consultant. He owns a number of, uh, of uh, smaller um, broadband companies and, and media-type companies. Uh, three years ago, he, he did a fairly comprehensive report on, on the status of MyNet and, and made a number of fairly substantive recommendations. Um, <coughs> in terms of how the, how the company ought to move forward. Um, we have decided, uh, we did decide as a, as a committee that we would like to have him come back after three years, um, then um, uh, take a look and, and see where we are now. Uh, and so he, he, he went back and he, and he, and he gave a, a, very, a very detailed report um, and if, if I don't get you this summary that Don did, I'll get you the full, the full report. Um, and it talks about a number of things. And there were a couple of things in the summary that, that Don did not include. Um, and part of that has to do with the changing landscape of uh, internet slash cable um, companies. Um, you know, just for example, in the in the three years since Doug was here uh, and, and reviewed it, uh, at that point, our programming cost for video is up $190,000. We have no control over that, $190,000. Um, we have reduced access charges from a, a roughly a high of about $130,000. Uh, it's down uh, now to about seventy-five. dollars uh, and going to zero. Now, the, the access is, is a long distance access charge that we charge others who access our customers for long distance use. So people calling in, as I understand it. Now, that's being phased out by the FCC. So that'll go from previously $175,000 roughly uh, to zero over time. Mm -hmm. So d just the quick nutshell was you know, we've lost, and just in the three years, we've lost $300,000 in revenue that had things remained the same, we would have had. And clearly that would have made 
a reasonable impact in in the bottom line for for minehead. So so it's just a you know changing landscape and um, things are just simply different now than they once were. And so in the summary document and 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 in the other one as well, I think the summary document. Um, is one that I think is very forward-looking. Uh, Doug Dawson makes a number of recommendations in terms of how we can further streamline our process, how our pricing structure might be able to change somewhat, uh, how we need to be a bit more um, attentive and attuned to uh, our competitors, and uh, how we might bundle things a bit differently, as well as some you know, additional um, bolt-on sort of revenue opportunities that might be there. So, so the the, uh, the MyNet board took quite a while to sort of drill down and, and talk with Doug and then talk after that <clears throat> on, um, you know, on, on some of the details of this, uh, but also charged the management with, you know, coming back to us either to retreat, which we're trying to schedule, or a subsequent meeting where they can go in and take a look at each one of the recommendations that that Dawson made to determine whether or not there's viability in our market here. Uh, you know, he's, he looks at things, small market, uh, smaller uh, cable companies, internet companies, and, um, you know, and, and, and so things that work in Missouri might not work out here, but nonetheless, they're ideas, and they have worked somewhere. So management is going to take a look at that and then, uh, you know, sort of vet each of those and come back with uh, some, um, you know, some recommendations in terms of how we may proceed uh, toward a more uh, profitable uh, future. So, uh, I, you know, th th that was the bulk of the, of the meeting. There, there's more of that. Uh, I'll, I'll determine if and, and, and why, well, you're telling me that you didn't. I don't recall getting it either, but I'll get minimally the summary of the Dawson report to you all. And, um, uh, and the other report is, if you're interested in it, if you're, you know, sort of a, you know, a little wonky in that regard, the uh, Dawson report is quite interesting and um, uh, good food for thought. I, I can get both of those uh, to you. But right now I'll focus on the uh, summary report. Anybody wants any more? Let me know. Yeah, that okay. concludes it. Could, right. Go ahead. Could, could, go ahead. You got it. Could we reach our um, call down to the office down in Minette and uh, could citizens get that report or is that just, it's not confidential? No, I don't believe it's confidential. I, I, I think it, 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 it might be. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's to a degree proprietary. It's a business mm -hmm. plan to move forward. Um, you know, given, you know, our roles here, I'd be happy to share it with you. It's not proprietary in that regard, but um, that's probably a question best left for yeah. Minutes Council in right. terms of like sure. yeah. what what can be bruised and what might be right. subject to retention under the public records law. Right. I don't know what's in it and I'm not their yeah. lawyer. So that's a good question. Yeah. yeah. But 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 given mm. given given the council's uh, status, I'm yeah. confident that I'm okay to disclose any of that to them. Don kind of offered us the Dawson report when he was here. He didn't provide it. Anymore. Well, I, I, I think he didn't want to drill down on it because he was anticipating the meeting we were going sure, to have. Sure, sure. And, you know, there's a lot of things that are thrown out there yeah, yeah. that need to be vetted, mm -hmm. uh, especially if he's going to present you, those publicly. You might, I would suggest check first. Yeah, check okay. first because once it gets out of Minot, then it's been released and, yeah. and it's not subject okay. to the same right. uh, protections from disclosure as it is when it's in Minot's possession. So that may be why the summary was produced. I don't know, but I would I would check with that because I'm just okay. not okay. Okay. You will. Okay, and, and you will uh, circulate? Yeah, whatever I can. Okay, so Scott then will yeah. share with you what we can or okay. what he can. Perfect. Very good. Thank you, Scott. Yeah. Question. Did, was there any discussion or has there been any discussion about how MyNet's going to engage with the modified lifeline, the federal lifeline program? Yes. Okay. That's yeah. ongoing. Yeah, that's another discussion where I'm trying to figure out how that is. And I did see a note that the, the rules they're coming out on are making a simple program really confusing. So yeah. I'll have to sort through yeah. everything. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? No. Yeah. Well, hey, where's, where's Dawson from? 
Florida. Florida. Okay. I thought it was Virginia. Yeah. Okay. But he's Florida. Florida. Uh, he's been in the business a while. He's, yeah. He did not visit on site this time, but has been out here. And right. Been on site. I think Don kind of referred to him as certified smart. So. He, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and and that was a question I asked. I said, what are we gonna, you know, why are we gonna spend, although it's a modest amount of money, for a sort of a follow-up report on something from some guy from Florida? Well. I quickly determined, you know, I mean, as I read the report, it was, that was money well spent and right. gave us uh, food for thought. Good. Okay, are there any community announcements tonight? I have a question, I don't know. The um, Historic Commission, are they doing a celebration during Historic Month? Yes, they are. What they day already started. Have? All right, well, you know, I didn't bring that slip of paper tonight, so I'm in a bad deal, but it was supposed to be in the the, the notes, the mayor's notes this month, oh, it wasn't in there. It was, oh, it wasn't in there? No, it wasn't. Yeah. And it's uh, going there. I don't know what happened. I thought it was the 10th. It can't Facebook? be the 10th. It has to be like the 14th or so. I think it's the 14th. 14th, isn't it? Yeah. I Saturday. We'll, we'll check it on the Facebook, on the yeah. Facebook machine yeah. before yeah. we get to the yeah. Make sure it's so our, our community announcement is anybody who's watching this, <laughs> go to the city website and check where the celebration is for the historic. Jailhouse, May 14th. 14th. Jailhouse, May 14th. 1 to 3, I think. 1 to 3, I think. That sounds right. Yeah. I think we had it last time as an announcement. And then yeah, I made yeah. it in April. Right. Okay. Back. Okay. Very good. Any others? Scott? Yep, just a couple things. Uh, Budget, the budget document is being printed as we speak. You know, we had an interesting process this year because we had a lot more adjustments than the normal with you know, going down with the various line item reductions. Then we have some adjustments in public works with some new staff, some rejiggering of staff in the police department. And the, the punchline out of all that is after all the pluses and minuses, including the senior center and the buildings here, we actually met the target. So, mm -hmm. more. That's the main thing. So, we're in good shape on everything. Um, second note is uh, interns. We've got a couple of really good interns right now, both the Western Oregon students. And uh, one's, one's supporting Mark Fancy on the, on the kind of urban growth down discussion, getting the housing analysis done, completed up. He actually was pretty cool. Took a first crack at it and actually found a seaman to how to get some of the mapping to go to one program and potentially link up with the regular GIS system. And, and so he's getting some nice maps prepared. We can go there. And then our um, second employee is working on her employee handbook. And he's gotten through the whole process of documenting you know, what's in the new document, what's in the old document. Anytime there's a, you know, the same, sick, like if sick leave's here and there's a sick leave here, then what do you do? Do you pick one or the other? Do you blend? So we're going to start working through that at a more detailed level. But give us some really nice work out of the company yeah. right now. That's great. So good. That's it. I've got a question about the um, uh, Mark and the development of that um, Urban Growth Boundary uh, document. Did are we hiring uh, someone outside uh, to come in and help with that? Potentially, we're still deciding. We have to see where we are with it. Um, but the potential, what we might do is we might do all the work so it's ready. But then the findings document when you submit it to DLCD is voluminous, and so we might have somebody that does that on a regular basis, plug in and get that done, just to make it more efficient. Council of Governments has a very strong planning staff that really helps small cities that. that I never faced this with this pile of work that the state requires. Isn't everyone. that one where we picked up Mark? Well, yeah, it is. Well, that's where he worked before. Yeah, we, we had a, a, a need for a planner and we hired the cog, and the next thing we know, he liked us so much he wanted to come and stay. <laughs> so, and he's been with us ever since. So there you go. Okay, anything else? Citizen comments? <laughs> okay. Uh, turning then to the business agenda, we have the council goals that we hammered out this uh, in the depths of a February afternoon. Um, Scott, yeah. So, so same process for you before you had your had your goal setting team building session. Um, you've got notes that covers everything, including just interaction between the council, uh, you know, bigger picture discussions, some longer term ideas. But then, out of all that, you end up with goals. Um, a little bit different this year, you end up with goals than what we dubbed focal points or just things that are always on the top of your mind but not a discrete project, so something didn't have a start and end date to it. Um, so with this, your uh, goals listed are monitor and leverage for opportunities, the Highway 99 and 51 ODOT projects. Second is establish a path forward on UGP expansion, fund and construct the senior center expansion, maybe expansion's a theme. I just kind of 
Then we go to the second page, you've got continue to deploy the facilities upgrade plan. Two items there are determined best approach to improving City Hall. Other is build a new power and light facility, and then determine the city's approach to street and stormwater funding. Your focal points are strengthen relations with other local government entities, look for opportunities to make bike and pedestrian safety improvements, support and guide the Monmouth Engage Committees, and consider economic development in all major decisions. So you can approve those as they are, you can reject them in total and come up with brand new goals, or you can work with wording if you need to. Whatever you want to do. Comments? Council? I continue to be pleased with having Cedar Cycle come in and work with us. That's a good job. Well, is that a finger up for a comment? We on, the, on the page six on the, the check marks, I guess I'm lost on that a little bit. You want to explain that to me? A, B, C, D, E, 5, 5, and then it says 3, 4. I mean, the, the idea is, is that, a, oh, I can't remember, it was like three or four years ago. We said, hey, let's let's lay out some criteria for some, some key things the city should be overarching kind of goals. And so that's where the, the, the colors are. When the color the ABC, D, yeah, you get those. And so then the idea is when you get a goal, right. does it apply to one or more of those objectives? Mm -hmm. So in the case of like the, the first one, the ODOT project, right. it actually met all the standards. Mm -hmm. So it's just a cross-reference is what it is. So we saw this idea from McMinnville, um, and you know, <coughs> it's, it's to kind of have a, a place to hang your goals from. Yeah. I was trying to figure the checks. I saw the, the objectives, but I was trying to figure the checks against what you had, you know, the timing mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? I don't think. I, I wasn't able to participate in the process, but I was happy to see it's, although it's not on the goals, the focus areas. Uh, and talking about updating the Monmouth Vision, the 10 year plan for 2026. Mm -hmm that diversity on city council being representative of the Monmouth community was highlighted. And I noticed in your mayor's notes, you sort of made folks aware that the, uh, the process for becoming an elected official or joining a committee. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it would be great if city council- You don't councilors, have to, but it's helpful. It'd be, it'd be helpful, and, and, and just that there's different levels of involvement. Right. And I think we've talked a lot about um, how sometimes when we're representative on the committee level, but then once we get to council level, things drop off for whatever reason. And yep. so I guess I know that I've been continuing to talk with people about the, the benefits and the challenges of being part of city council, and they can be a rewarding experience, and I hope that other councilors are doing so as well. And I'm happy to see that as part of the, the notes from the retreat. Very good. Any other comments? I would entertain a motion to adopt these goals. I move approval of both the goals and the focal points uh, coming out of our session. Second. Moved and seconded in favor. Aye. 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 Votes? Very good. Thank you. And that's it for the business agenda tonight. Are there any council comments? And hearing none, we do have a work session tonight. Um, I would propose that we take a five minute break and meet in the back and see if we can't hammer out that work session. Are you? Yeah. 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 And Steve, I didn't even yeah. forgot that. Okay. Okay. So you don't have to bring that yes. one. I was so just appointed. Do we need to make a motion to adjourn? Mayor? Because we asked, I asked <coughs> last month to be the mayor's motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to be adjourned. Thanks, oh. John. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. In favor of adjourning to work session? Aye. 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 Thank you, John. <laughs>